Hi, good to see you again today. In one of my earliest videos, we talked about overtones and harmonics, and today we're going to apply that directly to the cello. So if you haven't seen my previous video, or if you don't remember too well, it would probably be a good idea to go back and review it as some of the discussion that will follow will kind of assume that you, uh, that you understand some of the terminology that I'm using or the concepts that are involved. So the, uh, if you wish to do so, I've included the, the link below. Go ahead and watch that if you haven't yet already. Today we'll be looking at the first three harmonics on the cello strings, and we'll begin with the A string. As you may recall, the first harmonic results from each half of the string vibrating uh, independently of the other half, uh, with the node directly in the middle of the string. Okay, so I hope you can see in this, in this view that the, uh, the length of the string goes between the nut and the bridge. Now if I touch the A string exactly halfway along that length between those two ends, if I touch it lightly I will be preventing the, uh, the fundamental from sounding and I'm forcing it to vibrate only along each of the two halves like so. Right? The full open string would be this. When I touch it lightly at the halfway point, then we'll get our first harmonic. The result is the first harmonic on the string. In this case, it is the A and one octave above the fundamental or open string. And here's the harmonic again. And of course, the same is true on all of the other strings as well. Right, so the D string, touch the halfway point, we'll end up with the first harmonic, a D above the open and D string, open D, first harmonic, D. Same thing on the G string, G, G, and the C string, and the harmonic C. Quick side remark, being able to find this harmonic on each of the four strings on the cello is extraordinarily useful. It acts as kind of a gateway to the upper positions on the cello and being able to access it quickly and accurately will make a lot of position work in those upper areas much easier and much more accessible. Let's move on to the second harmonic. Now you may recall from our structure the second harmonic involves the string dividing along three parts of its length. In other words, the, uh, this, the string is kind of divided into three equal pieces. Uh, so there will be two nodes along that length. If I look at um, one-third of the string, that'll be here and approximately here. So if I touch it here along that, uh, that one-third spot, I will be masking the fundamental pitch as well as the first harmonic, and we'll end up with the second harmonic. Okay. You may recall that the second harmonic is one-fifth above the first harmonic. So the first harmonic was an A, and a fifth above that here will be an E. And in addition to producing that second harmonic here, we can also produce it by finding the other of the two nodes in this case, which is about here also producing an E, the exact same E in fact. And of course this will work just as easily on the remaining strings. On the D string our second harmonic will produce an A. On the G string our second harmonic will produce a D. And on the C string our second harmonic will produce a G. And of course we can find those on the other notes as well. There, there it's in. Okay, now what happens if we move on to our third harmonic? As you may recall from our structure, this now involves dividing each string into four equal parts with three nodes. Each, of, each node will be one quarter of the way along the string length. One of those would be right about here. 
there it is. Okay. Now that harmonic is one, uh, one perfect fourth above the previous harmonic, so that brings us on the A string back to an A. So this will be an A two octaves above the open A string. And of course we can get a similar effect by doing uh, uh, the other notes here and here. This one we'd have to make arrangements because if we do this by itself it'll sound just like the first harmonic, but if we stop the string uh, then it will sound just like the third harmonic does here. And of course the same is true on the other strings. Notice that in each of these cases, this harmonic is two octaves above the open string that it is playing on. Now, theoretically, we could keep going indefinitely, right? Uh, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and I could keep going. And as you can see, though, as we go further and further along, there are kind of diminishing returns. One problem is that the clarity and the quality uh, uh, starts to really diminish uh, once you get to a certain point and, and thereafter. And uh, in really extreme, really extreme cases, uh, at either end of the string, there will also be just the physical limitation of your finger on the string. So theoretically, we could go forever, Practically, there are certain limits. So I hope this has provided a useful overview of how harmonics can function on the cello. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment here on this video or contact me through my website. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again next time.